Hello, hi friends. I'm Latoya McBean Pompey, immigration lawyer here in Long Island, New York. I'm in my office and I'm doing a very new training for those of you who are out there and you're married and you'd like to know when to apply for adjustment of status. So this video will go through some things that you need to think about and tell you exactly when to do so. So let's have some fun here. Grab your pen, your paper, sit down, relax, chill out and watch this video and learn some things. Now I'm going to share my screen with you and dive right into this presentation. And here I am. I'm all the way down there on the screen, just married. But the question is, when should you file for adjustment of status? That's what we're going to talk about in this presentation. And yes, that is me friends looking kind of crazy there. And I had a great, great chat activity going on during that filming. I was reading the chat just recently and I saw a great question from Rochelle. Rochelle says that she is in New York and she just got married. But her question is, when is the best time to file for adjustment of status? So when I saw her question, I said, you know what? I know that many other people are out there in this situation and they are asking the same question. And now today under the Trump administration, people are, you know, really scared and they're puzzled about what to do, when to do things. They're on edge. They don't want to do the wrong thing, but they want to act, but they don't know when. And so I want us to look at some strategic things and answer this question about when to file for adjustment of status. And let's answer that question right now because you're here. And if you don't have a lawful status as of today, as you're watching this, you're at risk. And we're going to talk about the risk that you're facing if you don't take action and take it soon. So that's what we're going to address in this video. We're going to dive into Rochelle's question. Now, in our minds, this is how it is. In our minds, we think, well, my chances of approval will certainly go up if I've been married a long time at the time that I file for adjustment of status. And so to frame it a, a little differently, you might be thinking, well, if I'm only married for three months at the time that I filed for adjustment of status, the government is less likely to approve me because they're going to think something's wrong like this. I entered into the marriage because I want to get around the immigration laws or I'm trying to commit marriage fraud. That's the assumption. That's what a lot of people I think is going on in their minds. That's what they're thinking that if I've only been married three months, the government will give me a rough time and chances are they won't approve my application versus if I've been married, we've been married for about a year, two years, three years then they're likely to believe the marriage is real. And so at this point, that's when we should file. So basically I should enter into this, you know, wait in period, let's wait it out. Let's give it several months of being married, buy us some time so that the government will think that the marriage is real. And that's what people have been thinking. Why would they think that? Well, because, you know, they're saying to themselves, the government is really scrutinizing marriage cases. Right. And so obviously, if we've been married a long time, it means the marriage is real. It's solid. We have a good foundation and they won't question us about whether it's bona fide or not. But friends, guess what? That is wrong. It's wrong. Why is that wrong? Your chances of being approved for adjustment of status is not connected with how many months you've been married at the time that you filed. The government is less concerned about that than, you know, they are with other issues in your packet. Other issues are more important. So for example, let's say that, and we're, you know, and I'm thinking this through as I'm doing this presentation right now, but let's say that you guys met about two weeks ago. Then you guys went to the courthouse and you got married. And then about th three weeks later or so, you file for your adjustment of status. Well, with that kind of timeline, certainly it raises some flags because you guys have only known each other for a very, very, very short period of time. And then you filed right shortly thereafter. 
So yes, you know, common sense would say that if it was that scenario, then maybe, yeah, the government will look at your file very closely to see if the marriage is bona fide or genuine. But I can tell you this, friends, under that scenario, yes, the government is scrutinizing you, but they're also scrutinizing people who have said they've been married for a year, two years, three years, four years, five years. They're scrutinizing everyone who submits a marriage-based petition. The issue is really, can you prove bona fide marriage? That's the true question. It's not the timeline. It's whether the marriage is bona fide, whether your intent from day one, the moment you guys decided to get married on that day, did you intend to stay together for the rest of your life? Did you intend to have a real future together, grow together, grow old together? Was that your intent on that day? Well, if the answer is yes, then you're golden, you're, you're in, you can get your green card. That will work out for you. So let me back up real quickly back up and tell you what adjustment of status is. It is a one step process to a green card. It's one step because you're getting the green card here in the US on US soil. You don't have to start the process here and then go on an airplane and go to an embassy back in your home country to be interviewed at the embassy. No, you don't have to do that process which we call consular process no you can get the green card right here and i'm not going to talk about who is eligible for adjustment of status i've done videos on that go to mcbean immigration tv and watch those old videos about who is eligible but for those of you who are eligible for adjustment of status that process allows you to get the green card right here in the united states now, when should you file that application? Because that's the whole point of this video, right? Here are a few things I want you to think about. Firstly, are you married to a US citizen? Secondly, did you come in here lawfully? Did you see this nice border agent? Well, this is not really a border agent, right? I couldn't find a good picture for of a border agent, but I did find a lovely picture of the agent that takes your passport and give you a ticket to go on the airplane, right? She looks very friendly. And so did you go to an airport and you presented your own documents, your own passport and your own name, your own visa to come to America, was it you? Was it you at that border? And were you inspected by that border agent and came right and, and you were allowed in? If that's the case, then yes, you had lawful entry. And then thirdly, I ask yourself, do you have any other major issues standing in your way? Like what, right? Like fraud or misrepresentation? Did you lie to the government about anything at any point? Did you ever falsely claim to be a U.S. citizen? Did you ever give a photo switch passport? Do you have a criminal record? If you have other issues of inadmissibility standing in your way, that is definitely something for you to speak with a lawyer about because those issues can stand in the way of you being eligible to adjust your status. So the, if you're clean, meaning you had lawful entry and you have no other major issues standing in your way, then the time is now. The time is now. You've got to file now. Friends, there's no reason to wait. There's no excuse under the sun to wait. You might be saying, well, Attorney McBean, Pompey, I don't have the money yet to hire a lawyer or I don't have the money yet to pay the filing fees because I heard that the filing fees are like tremendously expensive. And it is, it's a pretty expensive process, but friends, when you get that employment authorization card, that work permit that allows you to work lawfully, you're then earning more money. You could support your family and yourself. Your earning potential goes up. If you work with a lawyer and you get it done right, the wait time for you is shorter than it is for those who stumble along the way on their own, making mistakes, or they go and they work with some guy that they've heard about through the grapevine who helps people out and he does some shady things, but he doesn't know what's really happening nowadays with the law and the changes. And so his shady things are actually getting people in trouble, but you don't hear about that part of it, right? And it's slowing people down or people are being thrown in court and being deported. You don't hear all of those stories all the time, but what you do hear is, oh, that guy, you know, 
he will only charge me $500 or $800 to do adjustment of status. So I'm going to go with him. But be careful, be aware of what you're facing when you go with those kinds of people. Again, I said the time to do it is now, 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 now. You find the money, you make it happen. This is top priority. Why? Well, because there are dangers of waiting. And one of the major danger is the changes that are happening like all the time in Washington, D.C. For those of you who have been following me on McBean Immigration TV, you know that I talk about a lot of the policy changes coming from the Trump administration, and they are not playing. They are not sitting in their conference rooms and thinking about how to make life better for you. No, they want you out of here. Or if you're on the outside looking in, they don't want you to come in. And I hate to put it that raw, but friends, I've been in those policy rooms. I've worked in government. I've worked with leaders. I've worked with politicians. I know how it works on the inside. And based on what we've been seeing from the Trump administration, it's very clear that their intent is they really want to decrease the number of people who are getting a green card. They don't want all of these approvals, right? It's a strategic thing. So policy changes are happening every day in Washington, D.C., so you don't want to wait until the next bomb is dropped on you, right? We are still dealing with the big bomb called public charge, which I've said is a game changer. Thank God public charge was placed on hold temporarily by a court here in New York. And so the government can't take any actions in that direction until the court makes a final decision on this case. So that's on hold but we don't know yet how it's gonna shake out in court. So there's that. Then there's also the danger of removal. You don't want to receive a notice to appear in immigration court because the government is, you know, they're now aware of the fact that you've overstayed or you have some other violations against you and you're in removal. And then I talked about this a little bit just now about the fact that your earning potential will decrease, right? The longer you're here unlawfully, the less money you're going to make, right? And so you've got to think about the fact that if you file for adjustment of status, you're also going to apply for your employment authorization card or your work permit so that you could work lawfully and earn more money. Now, to make this really work for you, friends, you need to have a very strong filing packet that's made up of your I-130, your I-45, your work permit application, your affidavit of support. And then lastly, friends, your evidence of a bona fide marriage. You need to have a very strong case, evidence that says the marriage is real. It's clear. I'm not going to cover what those evidence are in this short video but you're gonna need all of these things in order to have a strong packet. And then certainly to get through to the finish line, you need to have a successful interview with the government. Hold up, wait a minute. This guy, you know, that yellow shirt is just not working. Yeah, with yellow pants, yuck. But hold up, what if you're married to a green card holder? What if your spouse is a lawful permanent resident? That's what LPR stands for. What then? Well, different scenario. Why is it a different scenario? It's different because quite a bit of people who are married to a green card holder cannot get through in this country. They cannot adjust their status because they don't have a lawful status. So let's back up. The first question you need to ask yourself is, did you have a lawful entry? And if the answer is yes, awesome. But the question that trips people up is really, what is their status today? Do they have but the issue is you can't adjust your status and get your green card here in the United States if you don't currently have a lawful status, unless you're married to a U.S. citizen. There's an exception for people who are married to a U.S. citizen who came into this country lawfully. You must have had lawful entry. So if you're out there, no lawful entry, but you're married to a green card holder anyway, you're not going to be able to adjust your status. You're going to have to apply for a waiver if you're even eligible for that, you will have to apply for a waiver and then go back to your country and be consular process. You also have to ask yourself, do you have any other issues of inadmissibility? Do you have a criminal record? Do you have, have committed fraud, misrepresentation or anything else like that? Those things can really stand in your way. 
And so obviously this is me, right? I, why do I have a slide up here? Because a lot of people need legal help. And I will give you this tip. Do not wait to get the legal help that you need because you may regret it. Do it right now. File right now if you're eligible. You can contact me at 718-301-9732 or go to mcbeanlaw.com and schedule your consultation. Just to summarize, before we wrap this video up, this training up, if you're just married and you're asking yourself when should you file for adjustment of status, the answer is right now if you're eligible and if you're married to a U.S. citizen. Also, if you're married to a green card holder and you have a lawful status here, now is also the time to do it while you still have that visa in place, such as H-1B or any other temporary work visa or student visa or any other type of visa that's allowing you to be here presently and do whatever work you're doing here. If you have that and it's still good, meaning it has not expired and you have not overstayed, now, now, now is the time for you to take action and make sure that you file for adjustment of status. So I hope you found this training helpful. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.